Hey guys, it's JM. We're going to put together a few different builds for GPU plotters. We have been running Bladebit CUDA Alpha in the beta program for a couple weeks and we have some good results for some community members. So we'll, we'll take a little peek at that, look at a few of my systems and some of the things that affect performance. Um, so, you know, there's going to be lots of different builds for desktops in the future and when we support 128 gigabytes uh, and other Bladebit disk offloads, and there'll be people that want to do server builds. But um, I think workstation is definitely the easiest for most people to start at because a workstation uh, is basically made to, <laughs> you can see, put multiple GPUs in. It has lots of PCIe slots, a by 16. These workstation class CPUs have a ton of IO, ton of PCIe lanes. So you can put your GPUs in there. You can put your HBAs in there. Uh, you can put your 10 gig network cards, however you want to transfer plots off the device. You can put a U.2 SSD in an adapter. There's all kinds of stuff you can do in a workstation that you just can't do in a desktop because you run out of PCIe lanes. Um, the other thing about uh, workstations is they're relatively inexpensive now compared to servers. There's a lot of, um, you know, uh, Intel is about to release their PCIe Gen 5 and Sapphire Rapids based workstations, um, the W3400. So now you can start you will probably start to see Threadripper Pros go for a little bit cheaper. These are PCIe Gen 4. If you want to get a PCIe Gen 3 uh, workstation like a Lenovo P720 or an HP Z440, this is like Broadwell generation or like a Dell 9, uh, 7920 or 7910. These are awesome workstations. Uh, I have a few of these Lenovo P620, so I'll talk a little bit about kind of my builds and how we're doing there. Um, so yeah, why don't we start with that? You know, the, the, the first build, um, let me... Let me go here for a sec. All right, so the first build we're gonna look at is actually my build. Uh, so if we look at um, our, well, this is my spreadsheet. I'll show you the community spreadsheet here in a little bit. Um, I have two versions of this Lenovo P620 workstation, one that was sent to me by AMD and another one I just bought on eBay and I got this one for a killer deal. So I'll talk a little bit about how to get these. Uh, but mine has a, uh, Threadripper Pro uh, 5945WX. Um, I've tested a 3060 Ti and a 3090 in here. Uh, I was able to get 256 gigabytes of DDR4 uh, 8 because this has 8 channel memory on these Threadripper Pro, so you want 8 DIMMs. Uh, and I was able to get 8 32 gigabyte DIMMs uh, at 2133 for a total of $250. Uh, now, this workstation at level zero, that's just normal not compressed plots, is doing uh, 146 seconds uh, with a um, zero compression on a 3060 Ti and, it, and a 3090 is doing 97 seconds. Now, if we jump that, uh, now obviously the uh, third pro, this other one was really for blade bit uh, in memory CPU and a bunch of other stuff. So this is kind of an overkill system, but I'll just it'll, we can use it to describe kind of the performance, but as we jump to this higher CPU and higher DRAM, which really it's mostly the DRAM because the CPU is not really going to help you here uh, because there's not very much CPU activity during uh, Blavit CUDA plotting. It's really just, you know, using there to do some background memory stuff. But this memory speed difference from 2133 to 3200, we actually, I actually saw a pretty big bump, right? So from uh, this this 3090 on this system at level nine versus this other system. So 2133 to 3200, we saw a jump from 97 second plot time with C9 to 72 seconds. So that's pretty mind boggling. 72 seconds at C9, this is a single GPU workstation that's able to do 95 terabytes per day at about 400 watts. Um, so yeah, okay, this is a pretty awesome little build. So this is um, the build I have. I have a Lenovo P620, I have a Threadripper Pro. I mentioned that then the base model, um, you know, the one I have is this uh, 5945WX, but the, the three series is also totally fine for this. Uh, but the big thing is the PCIe Gen 4. And then I was able to find, you know, 8X sticks of 32 gigabyte DIMMs, uh, 3200, um, you know, I was able to find the 3200 ones, you're able to find at about $2 per gigabyte, whereas the 2133s, you're able to find at about $1 per gigabyte. So if you get a better deal on the 3200, it's definitely faster, but it's not going to kill your build. And then you'll need a buffer SSD, you know, basically any enterprise U.2 or, uh, like, you know, a, if you have a system that only accepts M.2, like Lenovo P620 has these uh, little adding cards you can put M.2s in and, you know, in, in a little... Uh, PCIe adding card, you can put four of them in there so you can get some 110 millimeter Enterprise M.2s for pretty cheap, 60, 70 bucks on eBay right now. 
So this whole system uh, I put together, you can see uh, I got a really killer deal. I got this whole system for $1,200, um, which was, I got the P620. It came with 64 gigabytes of RAM, so I had to upgrade it to 256. Uh, and it came, mine came with an A, A4000, which is uh, you know a little bit faster than a 3060 Ti. So uh, you can see here, um, you know, they're selling, uh, you know, new, this was new list, new open box, 2000, brand new, 2000, uh, you know, whoop, that's, uh, you got to make sure you're searching for the right thing. So I'm searching for a P620 workstation. These are the ones with Threadripper Pro. Uh, here's one for, with a 3945WX, uh, which was the, um, uh, the Zen 2 Threadripper Pro, I believe, 64 gigabytes of RAM, 1300 bucks. You know, so you can just keep keep shopping around if you want a super high end Gen Four workstation. This is the one for you. Uh, if you want to go, and so I, you know, again, this is like a twelve hundred dollar build, thirteen hundred dollar build that can do ninety five hundred terabytes a day. So this is really really killer build in my my book, especially if you have a ton to plot. Uh, the next ones we're going to look at are the PCIe Gen Three builds. So if you look at, uh, you know, there's if you want to go older generation, like a Xeon uh, V3, V4, these are PCIe Gen 3 and DDR4. Uh, again, you know, I, you can go all the way to V2 and DDR3. It's just, you know, you're not going to be able to resell those whatsoever. And boy, these are already pretty cheap. Like an HPE Z440 on eBay right now is $100 <laughs> bare bones. And you can buy a CPU for 25 bucks and then 256 gigs of DRAM for I mean, 250 bucks. Now all of a sudden you're buying a, a workstation for you know whatever four hundred dollars that all you have to do is add whatever GPU you, you have in and you're plotting you know 40 50 terabytes a day. So we have some really good data from uh, the Boybit. Uh, I, I organized this in, by C0 here. Uh, this is the, the the results for C0. Um, we can kind of look at some times here. Let me see if I can uh, shrink this a little bit, um, make it easier to see over here. Uh, yeah, so one, the, if you sort this by time, here's my system on the top here and uh, my other Ice Lake server here, which is um, I was doing with an A4000 on my Ice Lake server. It's doing 120 second plot time with C0, but we're, we're talking about workstations right now. Um, so one of the things you can see here is somebody has one of these uh, Xeon V3s, V4s with, with like a 3060 Ti and they're doing 180 seconds for a plot. So this is... Uh, if you look at 180 seconds, this is like 52 terabytes per day of plotting power. Uh, and, you know, you can do this, like, you can build this really inexpensively for V2, V3. You can build this whole system for, like, uh, you know, again, CPU, like, 25, 30 bucks. You know, that uh, bare bones is a workstation, 100 bucks, DRAM, 250 bucks. Plus, you know, a 3060 Ti is, like... You know, 250, 300 bucks. That's probably overkill for this build. You can probably go some something like a two series or something, but uh, I don't have any of those on hand. So, um, you know, we'll just say if I were to do this build, I would do this kind of build right here. Something like something like this where, you know, you have uh, any, any Z on V4 that's cheap, 20 bucks, any, whatever the cheapest 256 gig, gig kit you can get. And then 360 Ti. Now I believe these workstations, this Broadwell is four channel memory. So many of these CPUs will have eight DIMM slots, which is exactly what you need for 256. So that's good. Um, you got to be a little careful on Sky Lake and Cascade Lake. Um, this is Xeon Silver and Xeon Gold because these are six channel memories. So to get to 256, you still need eight DIMMs, but often single CPU slots on a workstation may only support six DIMMs. So you got to kind of look at the boards, but I believe these uh, P720s and uh, 7920 and 7910s from uh, Dell any of these generations will be be totally supported. Now these are awesome because they have, uh, I like the P720, P620 just because they're small and you can fit a bunch of GPUs in there and a bunch of everything you need, super easy to build. 7920 is a little bit bigger. You know, you can put a bunch of add-ins in the front like a U.2 slot, some other good stuff. Um, so I'm seeing these on eBay, uh, you know, for 400, 500 bucks, you know, for ones with CPUs and some RAM and a GPU. Um, you can probably find these for a little bit cheaper. Um, 256 SSD bronze CPU. Now, don't worry if you can find these bare bones for two or 300 bucks, that's a better deal because you can, if you go look uh, on eBay for a, you know, Xeon silver, um, you can find now, um, 
uh, look, I mean, eight core, 4110 for $19. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're not exactly expensive now. Uh, so you can, you can find a Xeon silver or gold for 20 to 50 bucks. Uh, so don't worry if you find a bare bones workstation, that's totally fine. You don't need to have one that comes with CPUs. You just need to make sure that you have the, um, uh, the heat sinks in there. So uh, P720, this is the Skylake uh, version of the Lenovo. Again, you can find these, um, you know, uh, that's that's a 7, uh, 720. You can find them for the same thing, four or 500 bucks, 400 bucks with CP, you know, CPUs in there. Um, so you'll have to hunt around a little bit. Um, you know, just if yeah, you have to go look at, but um, so these ones, these Skylake ones, we're seeing if we look at people with some of these uh, Xeon Golds. Um, somebody had a good one down here. Uh, oh yeah, somebody, let's, let's filter by uh, all the compression levels here. Find, uh, find the Xeon Gold here. Somebody had, uh, here we go, Xeon Silver. Uh, some, uh, this, uh, total plot time for C9 was uh, 134 seconds, and this is on PCIe Gen 3 because um, you know, the Xeon Silvers don't support uh, Gen 4. So he said Gen 1 here because the script, um, many of you guys know, NVIDIA will clock down to PCIe Gen 1 while the, the drive is idle. So if you run the script to get the system config while it's idle, it'll, uh, it'll tell you it's at PCIe Gen 1. But if you actually do a, you have to do a workload like plotting or just a benchmark to, to get the GPU to uh, ramp up uh, but so this is an interesting build the atx uh, nvidia rtx a4000 um, i really like these for servers um, this is like my favorite server gpu right now because it's got 16 gigabytes of vram of, of gddr6 so you can do plotting and farming at the same time uh, it's one you know single slot so you can fit it fits very nicely in um, servers but also nice in workstation. It only takes a single six pin power connector. So it's like 170 watt max. Uh, it, this is just a fantastic GPU. You can find these for 450 bucks on eBay. Uh, if you already have obviously a 3090 or a 3060 Ti, then just put those in there. Again, a two series will work as well, but we're seeing, um, you know, kind of the fastest plot times. Oops, let's jump back here. Uh, if, if we sort this, the fastest plot time we've seen on a PCIe Gen 3, I believe, is this. That one we just showed, which was 134 seconds. Uh, we're seeing some other, uh, you know, basically, you know, some other Gen 3 systems at like 140, 160 seconds with compressed, 180 seconds not compressed. Uh, again, this was interesting one where you have a, a Dell PowerEd R730 XD with a Xeon E5 2660v3. This is, uh, you know, Haswell uh, and a 3060 Ti. So again, two, two, 256 gigs of DDR4 2133. It's 180 second plot time uncompressed. This is like, again, you can build, uh, you know, building these systems. You can, if you search around, you're going to be able to find like pretty inexpensive parts. So. Um, servers are great. I have lots of 2U servers. If you're going to do this, you're going to need to be more strategic about the GPU, right? If you're building a server, I'd probably go for data center. Uh, you know, if, you're, if you already have a server, maybe the best thing to do is just buy an A4000 or something, maybe even something smaller, uh, you know, or one of the older cards if you are don't care about plotting, you know, in a 180 seconds or whatever. Uh, if you are building a brand new system, you know, you have to think about your budget. So if you want a nice Gen 4 workstation that you're going to use for other stuff after plotting, like you know, gaming or performance and all kinds of other crypto stuff, you know, Gen 4 workstation is awesome. If you want to look at a PCIe Gen 3 workstation, you can get really good deals. Again, you know, four or five hundred dollars for fully built workstation on the P720 or Dell's. Um, if you want to go for just an older build, just for super budget, you know, you're going to be able to build a plotter for 600 bucks or so that can do 30, 40 terabytes a day, maybe more, maybe maybe like 40 to 50. So uh, you're just gonna have to um, figure out what your budget is and figure out where you want to focus for the workstations. But uh, yeah, there's this opens up so many awesome builds for GPU plotting uh, that are just insanely fast. Again, you're, um, we'll do a whole nother video on, you know, selecting an SSD for one of these because I know that uh, a lot of people are confused about you know, unfortunately, the, a lot of some of the workstations support U.2, some of them don't. So you, sometimes you just need to buy like an M.2 
Uh, I would avoid using consumer drives for, and even for a buffer for staging your plots because it is a lot of writes, right? If you're, if you're writing 50 to 100 terabytes of plots a day and you're staging those to an SSD, uh, you're gonna need a, you know, a data center SSD. But if you wanna do something quick on eBay, you know, just go to eBay and search like you know, nice 160 gigabyte NVMe and you'll see some you know, data center drives, PM963, okay, I'd rather get like the, uh, I'd rather get like the uh, uh, 983, um, those are a little bit newer, um, but you can kind of look, a 983, Samsung, 80 bucks, so Kioxia, um, Micron, 7300 Pro, so you'll be able to find, um, you know, so you, you, if you look at the data center capacities, you can go like 19, 20 gigabyte NVMe, you don't find anything there uh oh look 7400 pro 19 two terabyte 138 bucks that's a great deal for a, a really good drive uh 1.92 terabyte you can do the same thing kind of just look here uh you'll be able to find like uh, sk hynix this is, i think if this uh i was able to find the pe 6110 which is like three gigabytes a second right on the 960 no, it was on, two, on the 960 gig, it's like 2.4 gigabytes a second sequential right so 1.92 maybe around same, maybe a little bit higher, but 115 bucks. Yeah, there's tons of good picks uh, for uh, PM9A3, 1.92 terabytes for 138. This is an amazing deal. <laughs> this is a kick-ass PCI HN4 drive. It'll blow the doors off a 980 Pro uh, any day of the week. It's same controller, but with Enterprise NAND. So you have like 7,000 cycles uh, and you have uh, higher programmer cycles, you have higher TBW, you know. So these are much, 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 much better drives. So yeah, again, um, the workstations again, uh, yeah, you might want to buy one of these, um, you know, PCIe adding cards. Uh, let's see if I can work. Uh, PCIe M.2 adding card or adapter. You know, you can see one of these. You can buy them. You can probably find these used for fifty bucks. I have a couple of these that are. I have a couple of these that are great that I bought used for forty bucks. Uh, just the just right off used uh, Amazon. You can put and these support eighty and one hundred ten millimeters. So the Enterprise M.2s. And these will slot right into a workstation and be able to bifurcate the you know the by sixteen to four by fours no problem. So that's one solution. Or you can just buy you know a uh, PCIe, whoops, uh, PCIe to U.2 adapter. You know you can buy any of these adapters. This is the Gen three one that works fine, twenty bucks. Um, there's a Gen four one. Uh, this is the the Glow Trends one is the one I have for Gen four. This is the Oops. Yeah, this is the one I have for PCI Gen 4. Last purchase. Yeah, this one works fine. The Gen 4, 21 bucks. So, uh, yeah, do some shopping around. Uh, again, if you're building a new workstation, uh, this is, if you're plotting hundreds of terabytes, I would consider this. If you're plotting just a few drives, then you can probably just use the tools you already have, like wipe a disk. Um, and uh, we'll be able to support compressed plots through there too. But if you're plotting a lot, uh, Certainly GPUs are much more efficient, much higher performance, uh, and much more, uh, much better for plotting a lot of data. So uh, with that, hopefully it was a nice, fun little uh, peek at some workstations I've been taking a look at. So thanks.